All right, we are going to get started on texturing of this thing. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a section and I'm just going to repeat it. All right. I brought in one of the hanging lamps and I'm going to say that I'm done with the modeling and I want to start texturing. And I'm going to texture this piece here, which I'm calling the arch and the big floor because I've got another arch with the little floor that corresponds to the, the vent uh, entry. So first of all, I've got all my stuff organized here. I'm on the arch big floor. I'm just going to focus on that. Now, um, let's see what modifiers I've got. I've only got this weighted normal thing, and that's not going to cause a problem. Um, what I want to do, first of all, is I want to come in I want to make sure everything is selected. Press M and merge by distance. Now I've already done this so I don't have any extra vertices. That's something you definitely want to do. And I'm going to try to do this the easiest way possible, which is using either um, Smart Project to UV Unwrap This or Cube Projection. There's no way that I could, you know, uh, put seams in all of this. There are probably a few edges I could get rid of. I could probably get rid of this one, but in case I decide I want to mirror it for some reason, uh, I'm going to leave that for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to UV editing and I'm going to go in and I am going to press U, Smart UV Project, and for my island margin, I'm going to put this at 0, 0.0. I'm going to try 0, 0.3. See if that's enough. So I've done that. Now I'm going to pack the islands. Now you could just use Blender. You can come here and pack islands, and that's fine. But I have I have uh, UV Pack Master 3, and I'm just going to pack and just a little bit more efficient and to close that so it's packed them in it's trying to use the uv space as much as possible now smart uv projecting is a great way of doing things but it's not going to organize all the pieces in a way that would let you put you know fine textures if you really need to know where things are and you need everything to be really organized it's not ideal but for sort of a procedural kind of a texture it should be fine all right, so I'm going to try this and see how well it works. So I've Smart UV projected. There's no seams. I've packed it. I'm going to go back into object mode, and I export this. So I go File, Export, FBX. Find a place where you want to keep this. I'm going to put it in here. Now, I've already done this. I'm going to call this Arch and Big Floor Big. I'll call this Video and click on selected objects. I just want to export just that and export. Then I'm going to save and I'm going to head over to Substance Painter. In Substance Painter, now I may have a different version than you. I'm going to open that up. Press new. I'm going to leave everything here. Select. There it is. Open. OK. Give it a minute and there it is. Now if it ever comes in looking like this, almost invisible, it's because some of your polys are flipped. I probably won't be able to see any problems in this view. I'm going to have to bake the mesh maps before I can see that and then that will be very important. So let's go ahead and do that under the texture set list. I'm going to scroll down, choose bake mesh maps. I'm going to choose 2K, uncheck ID, I don't need that, and bake. I'm looking at the squares and the size of them as this is happening. It's not looking too bad for texel density. Now I'm going to look at this and I'm going to look for any discoloration, any dark black kind of spots on this. And it's looking pretty good. It looks like Smart UV Project has done a decent job. From here, I would probably just add a test texture and have a look at that. So I'm going to delete that layer. And I'm going to come to my Smart Materials and just drag something on and see. And it may not look great, but does it look that bad? Of course, I can hold down Shift and right mouse button and I can move the light to look around. 
Okay, so the texture I want to use on this, uh, I am going to use a smart material, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I have multiple pieces of this, and they're not all open here, and I want to get the same kind of texture on that. So I'm going to have a smart material, and I can get the same, the same look, pretty much. All right, so we're going to build a smart material very similar to the one that I intend to use. Now, I've got one in here called Duke. I've got a couple varieties, and I'm going to build one very similar to this. All right, and so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a metal, and I'm going to start with steel rough. I'm going to drag that in, and that'll go on there. And I may choose to change the scale. What if I made this three? I'll go with two. So I've got my basic steel on there, and then I just look around, see if it's discolored anywhere, change the light a little bit, that looks okay. And now we're going to add some dirt. This is very basic stuff, all right? So I've got my steel rough, I can change the colors, I can go in here, change some of these properties if I want to, but I'm okay with that. All right, I'm going to create a new fill layer by clicking on this paint can here thing. It's going to turn white. I'm going to add a black mask. Now I have my steel. I don't see any of the white. I'm going to change that white color to a dark color. I really only need color, so I, I just alt-clicked, and that selected just the color. And then I'm going to click roughness as well. I'll have roughness. I'm going to drag the roughness all the way up, because it's going to be dirt. And I click on the base color, dynamic. Go to a brownish kind of color. Dark. It's almost going to be black anyhow. I'll just choose something like that. Come back to my layers, click on the black mask, and I'm going to click on the magic wand, add generator, and properties of the generator. And click on the generator, and I'm going to choose dirt, and that's going to grunge it up. From there, you can adjust the, 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 how much dirt. I want a good amount of dirt. I want it nice and dark like that. And that's really going to make this stand out really nicely. Then just have a look around, change your light. See how everything's looking? That looks nice and grimy and oily, dirty for the inside of the air shaft. I mean, think of the, the dirty air that's going to be in there. All right, and it darkens it up in here so it looks like, you know, you don't even see the bottom, which is exactly what I wanted. So I think that looks excellent. And then I'm going to add some scratches to this. All right, now most people would probably name these layers. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to add another fill layer. Click here and I'll change the color right away. I want my scratches to actually have a color. We're going to have color, so I'll click color and I want height. I want my scratches to be indented a little bit. I'm going to change the color to sort of a blackish color here. Now everything's gone black because I don't have a mask on. Not everybody wants to have color for their scratches. They just want a, a change in height, but I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to drop the height down just a little bit. You can change this layer later. Now I'm going to add a black mask so that scratches layer seems to be gone. And in the black mask here, I'm going to click on the magic wand and choose fill. I'm going to add a fill layer to this. I'm going to come to properties and you can see I've got this slot here for grayscale. For the scratches, I'm going to click on procedurals and I'm going to search for scratches. And there's a few different ones here, but the one that I like is this last one, these grunge scratches. I'm just going to drag that over to there, and that will put the scratches on. From here, you can adjust the balance, the quantity, the tiling, all kinds of, of, of you know parameters. Um, but that's basically the effect that I'm going to be going for. So I've got my dirt, I've got my metal, I've got scratches. Now, the one other thing is how sharp these look they're a little bit blurry all right and you know that's because the way i uv unwrapped it i didn't use a lot of the texture space in the uv um, for this area all right and so one thing you can do is come up here and look and say well i'm only using 1024 i'm going to change that to 2k my computer can't handle 4k that well so 2k should be good enough do that, give it a moment. Now they're a lot sharper. So now I've got 2K texture there. I'm just gonna do that throughout my project. 
And that is good enough for me. That's really what I want. All right. At that point, I can export that out, those textures. The first thing you should do, though, is save this. Then you come up to File, Export Textures, and you notice that I've got this called Wall Arch Floor right over here. You can rename your texture here. All right, so whatever material you want it to be called, uh, you can use that in Blender. And then you'd go export textures. And under output templates, um, I generally, I have one here, PBR metallic roughness. It's got the base color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and it's got emissive if you happen to need it. All right, I don't even need it for this particular one. I will for later. All right, so you would go file, export textures, right choose your output template I'm going to choose that PBR metallic roughness you can change this if you want I'll leave it on 8 and your output directory and you'd bring that into blender I'm not going to do that right now we're just going to look at texturing for the time being all right so that is it for the texturing of that piece now there's other things to do and there's other colors and i'll show you that in another video so hopefully that'll get you started with that the one thing i should leave you with however is if you want to reuse this texture on your next piece let's say the wall piece what you want to do is create a folder drag all of these into the folder give this folder a name like uh, alien metal or something all right and then right click and create smart material and now we have alien metal so if I was to start again all right after I bake the mesh maps make sure you you know you bake the mesh maps right and I'm starting here I've got no layers I could just take this smart material and drag it onto here or into here and it would put it on keeping in mind I'm at 2k all right, so I can bring in another thing like that lamp, let's say, or the wall unit, and I can drop that on. And then I can make subtle changes if I want to. All right, that's all I'm going to show you this time. Feel free to experiment with that, and we'll come back. I've got more stuff to show you.